Hey, what's going on guys? It's Nickens back with another video and today we are talking about the Cobra's Mallard series It's happened this past weekend. It's gonna be a fun time So make sure you guys hit the like and subscribe button uh, Let me know what you think about this series in the comments and yeah, let's just jump into it So the first game of the series probably the most controversial for a lot of people Mostly because of what went down in that third inning So the Cobras were up 2-0 heading into the final inning and they were looking really strong Strong. And then Baron put on Baron put on two guys on base, got his final out, and so with two outs left, they all decided. And I want to make sure it's clear. It's like everyone decided that it would have been a good idea to pull Baron out and put Drew in relief pitching. It makes sense to happen in MLW at some point in time. I don't. I disagree with the idea at all. I don't think any. I think a lot of people do, but. I think I'm in the mindset that it wouldn't be a bad idea. It's just tough when it is the first game of the series. You haven't pitched the whole time. So, like, it would be interesting, like, to say if it was a second game of the series, say Drew had pitched the first game, came into the second game, Baron pitched two innings, and then closed that third. And uh, so that not necessarily may not ha be a bad idea. Um, so in this case, Drew came in very confident that – he could get two outs with two guys on base. And what ended up happening is that the Mallards just kind of didn't swing at any of his stuff, um, and he wasn't able to hit the zone. A lot of people sounding off in the comments about how that was a dumb move, how it was this and that. I don't think the move itself, like the idea of it, is not a bad thing. It's just Drew put himself in a very, very tough position. And uh, at that point, you just have to execute you know, this time he didn't execute, but I talk, I'm going to talk about later on the MLW network. It's that, you know, if he looks, if he does goes out and shuts him down, he looks really good. Like he looks amazing, but I mean, he ended up just walking some guys and that's tough. Nothing against the decision. Um, it just, the result didn't go their way. So what ended up happening, not the best for the Cobes, but at the end of the day, uh, I think it's not super big of a deal. They tried it. We'll see what happens in the next series. Um, the Tobes, I mean, the, if you're being honest, though, the Mallards really got lucky in this series to get the win. Um, if we're talking about this game one, um, because the Cobras, the game two Cobras were kind of felt, came out flat. Um, obviously, that was a tough game to lose after you felt like you're doing well and winning the whole time. And, uh, they uh, just allowed people to get on base. Sorry, Bean was peach pitching, pitched two innings and gave up six earned runs. Um, he he looks he doesn't look bad, but by that time they were able to see him better. Jordan Robles uh, got uh, a home run, and so did Tommy. Tommy had that grand slam. They were able to see him pretty well going on. He's not a bad pitcher. I think he'll be very serviceable. He's just got to understand his range emotions um robles looked good pitching game one and in game two he, he looked pretty solid again um with the hype that everybody was giving him i expected him to be more unhittable but he's not unhittable he has really good stuff um obviously he has great zone control great pitch count control but that doesn't that doesn't mean to say that he's not unhittable um which you know i don't think any guy in this league should be unhittable uh, there's no Ben Joyce's running around out here throwing 105. Overall, pretty pretty, uh, pretty good game, too. There's not much to speak on, really, other than the fact that uh, the Copes just didn't hit well in this game. Drew uh, hit the only run and had two hits, and Andy got a hit, but then Sean Flynn and Sawyer didn't get a hit this whole game. Davis hit the home run. Yeah, that's what it is. Davis hit, Drew Davis hit the home run. So, I mean, Davis is still putting on, still putting up great numbers hitting-wise, and he did it in game one as well. Uh, getting a hit, and Andy Duran uh, got another hit. As far as the Mallards, uh, Ben Wilson really didn't look amazing. Uh, Tommy and Jordan are going to get on base. They, they, they're able to really read the ball well. They were able to do it in game two. They continued that streak, and Ben Wilson didn't get on base, got four strikeouts, and Brendan Davenport had three walks, and just three walks in general, so 100% on base percentage for him on game two. And then going to game three, this was probably the best game for the Cobes in the series. That had tied 2-2, and it had to go to extras. That Jordan Robles got four walks. Uh, Tommy Coughlin also got four walks. But the only problem was that Jordan Robles, there was only one hit for the Mallards the entire time, and that was Jordan Robles. So even though they were getting walked, um, no one else was uh, coming up. So beat easy. 
uh, five at bats, four Ks. Um, ben Wilson, five at bats, three K. But really, a story was Sean uh, had a double and a home run, and uh, in that fourth inning, he basically batted himself in, which was really freaking good. Um, great home run, another walk off for Sean. Um, so I, I'm like look, <clears throat> looking into it. You know, I'm not super worried uh, going into series uh, for the Cobes. Um, on the other side, for the Mallards, I don't have too much to say other than the fact that like Tommy is. St- Pretty good at pitching still, um, even though he gets the. I don't think he gets the L on this, which is not, which is pretty good. Uh, Robles does. It's going to be an interesting year for the Mallards. I don't, you know, it's hard to win because the Mallards still don't have that third guy. Hopefully, Caden Irwin comes back and he can uh, help the Mallards. I think they really need him uh, if he can, you know, get up to speed where he needs to be. Because um, Ben Wilson did not look great in the series. Uh, Beat easy, look good in the second game, but not this third game. So they, the Mallards still need that third guy, and without that, they're not going to probably beat the Eagles. They're probably not going to beat the d So it's going to be coming down to the Gators and uh, Mallards, in my mind, uh, for who's going to win this series. I also think that the Cubs have nothing to worry about. Um, obviously, the comments are going to be crazy about the Cubs and blah, 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 blah. But... I think they have a good shot this series. Um, the Magic didn't look great in their first series either. That was without Agner. <clears throat> and Drew Davis didn't even really pitch. So they still have three good arms that can get them wins. And the ability to rotate around that is going to be really crucial. And it'll be good for them. Barron's looking a lot better than he did last season, which is awesome. Uh, I think that he's finally come into his stride as uh, the number one overall pick, where a lot of people were looking down on him. So... That's good. Jordan Robles, definitely a, number, a good number one overall pick. But the Mallards, are they going to be able to lift themselves up from three or third or fourth position? That's the question. That's what we're going to look into. Um, obviously, they have a series win, but they did that last year, and it got them really nowhere. So let me know what you all think in the comments. Uh, kind of a another interesting one, but again, kind of with the Preds and the Gators series, it's tough to really... Um, put it all into perspective yet since we I don't have enough series um, to really do it. So hopefully I will see more. I'm going to do a power rankings video up, coming up soon to wrap up the first weeks of games. And yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying everything. Let me know what you think in the comments and I will see you all next time.